Here I want to solve some math problems to aid you in preparing for the math test associated with the general physics course. Uh, problem number one says consider M1, M2, V1, V2 known. Combine the following equations and solve for V1 prime and V2 prime. They give us these two equations. we're going to do here are going to be either similar to uh, problems you'll see on the math test or uh, the same as problems on the math test. Do not assume they're, they're, they're exactly the same. Uh, in some cases they're just similar and you use the same techniques but you'll get a different answer on your math test. Okay, we've got two equations, two unknowns, both equations linear equations, no, nothing squared in here. Um, in neither equation can we just directly solve for one of the unknowns. Here I've got both unknowns, so if I solve for V2 prime, for instance, I've got V1 prime in the answer, which is what we're looking for, one of the things we're looking for. Same thing up here, it's got both of them. Uh, typically, the, uh, the way to go about this set of simultaneous equations, number one, make sure you get as many equations as you have unknowns. We've got two unknowns, two equations, then you know it's doable. If you've got more unknowns than you have equations, then the system can't be solved. You need a general principle of algebra in order to solve a set of uh, simultaneous equations. You need as many equations as you have unknowns. Okay, typical method, take one of the equations and solve or express one of the unknowns in terms of the other. So here I'll take V2 prime and express it in terms of V1 prime and known stuff. Okay, now I've got to get all the terms involving V1 prime on one side of the equation all by themselves. Well, they're already over here on, by themselves on one side, so I just have to get the other stuff over to the other side of the equation. Let's say plus M2 times a minus V2, I need a negative sign right there. Okay, I'll subtract this term involving V1 from both sides. Okay, now I'm going to just copy this term down. And then add the uh, M2V2 to both sides. I get a minus M2V2, so I get zero over there. And now this is what's left over here. from these two terms and the V1 prime from these two terms. Well, this is uh, just 2 M2 V2, so I don't really have to factor it out. Okay, 
Okay, now I'll divide both sides by M1 plus M2, and uh, I'm all done. I'll uh, put V1 prime on the left-hand side of the equation. I think your solving force should go on the left. minus 2 times x plus 5 is equal to 3. Uh, let's multiply this side out. I get an x times x, that's x squared. I've got a minus 2x plus a 5x, that's plus 3x. And then minus 2 times 5 minus 10 is equal to 3. Subtract the 3 from both sides. get this in the form of the quadratic formula, the, the quadratic equation, for which I need the quadratic formula to solve it. Anytime you've got uh, the variable squared in your equation, go ahead and get it in the form of the quadratic formula. If uh, this term disappears, you can solve it differently, or if this term disappears, you can solve it differently. But you might as well check. Get it in the form of the quadratic equation. And uh, if you've got all three terms, that is some, the variable squared times something, the variable itself times something, and in our case for the variable squared, the something was just a one, and a constant, something that involves other things, but not the variable that you're trying to solve for. Once you get it in this form, you can go ahead and apply the quadratic formula. In our case, minus b, our b is a 3. Now watch out, if this is negative, if this says x squared minus 3x, the minus is part of the b, but our case is plus. So we've got minus 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that'll be 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1 in our case, times c, which is a minus 13. All divided by, make sure this uh, divided by sign extends all the way under everything, 2a. 2 times 1a. So we uh, plug this into our calculator. This is our x. And we should get two answers, one for the plus sign and one for the minus sign. The easy way to evaluate that, go ahead and evaluate what's inside the square root. So we've got 3 squared, that's a 9, minus 4 times a minus 13, that's plus 4 times 13, since we've got two minus signs. And I get 61, so that's 40, 52, and 961, that makes sense. Take the square root of it, uh, about a 7.81, and then store that. Okay, now start over. Hit uh, 3, hit your plus or minus sign, you get a minus 3, and then plus, recall that thing that you stored, the square root there, equals, don't forget to hit the equal sign here, and then divide it by 2 equals 2.41. Okay, then do the minus sign. 3 plus or minus to make it minus 3, and minus what you stored equals, divided by 2 equals, I get a minus 5.41 for the other square root. Okay, number 3. Give us a try.
triangles, some lines, and they ask us to find theta. Let's say this is 55 degrees, 65 degrees, 60 degrees. Got a line coming in here. Here's the theta they want us to find. Uh, they draw a perpendicular here. Say this angle is 11 degrees. And we're to find theta. Here's the game plan. I'll get this angle. Uh, this angle plus 11 degrees has to add up to 90 degrees. So this angle I'll call it phi is 90 degrees minus 11 degrees. Okay, now these three angles, phi, 55 degrees, and theta, since they're the interior angles of a triangle, they all have to add up to 180 degrees. So I can say theta is 180 degrees minus the sum of these two. us this equation. And they ask us to solve for x. That's wrong. That was uh, number two. Number four, they want us to solve for y. They give us r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, solve for y. We want to get y all by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. We'll square it. The inverse function to the square root is the square. So if we get rid of the square root, we square both sides. I'll get r squared is x squared plus y squared. Once I square the right, all that's left is what was inside the square root originally. Uh, solve it for y, I'll subtract x squared from both sides. And then take the square root of both sides and also switch sides so that I get the thing I'm solving for on the left hand side. And in fact, uh, when you take the square root of something, there are always two roots. You get plus and minus the square root of r squared minus x squared as our final answer. Number five, they want us to solve for B. And we're given we can multiply both sides by what's in the denominator over here. We're trying to get D squared all by itself on one side of the equation. Divide both sides by y. Again, we're trying to get b squared all by itself. If I multiply through by y, I'm getting b squared all mixed up with y. Let's go ahead and get rid of the y from this side. I'm going to copy that over up here. Swing over so that you can see it. B 
squared by itself. Let's subtract r squared from both sides. It's added on this side to the b squared, so I subtract it rather than uh, dividing, for instance. And then take the square root of both sides. Again, there are always two square roots to any uh, entities. For instance, the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Minus 5 squared gives you 25, just as 5 squared. Five squared does. Okay, let's try problem number six. It says solve for t. Given x is equal to x zero plus v zero t plus one half a t squared. So assume everything else is known except for t and go ahead and solve for t. In this case, you notice t appears squared to the first power, and there's also a constant term. Whenever you've got the variable you're interested in squared, get it in the form of the quadratic equation and see if you actually need that quadratic formula. So we get 1 half a t squared plus b0 times t plus x0 minus x all equals 0. This is the variable, the t. Everything else we should con con consider a constant, so we've got some constant 1 half a multiplying the t squared. We've got a constant b0 multiplying the t, and added to that, we've got an x0 minus x. Again, we use our quadratic formula. In this case, we're solving for t. extends all the way under the minus v0. 2 times a, in our case 2 times 1 half of this a, a different a than the one that appears in our quadratic formula. Our quadratic formula a is 1 half of the a that it appears in this specific case. And then simplify, please simplify. t is equal to minus v0 plus or minus the square root of v0 squared minus 4. This is 4 times a half is 2, so minus 2a and 2 times a half is 1 all divided by a, and that's our answer to problem number 6. Number 7, they ask us to solve for x. We have room for number seven right here. They say one minus one divided by b minus x is equal to a. They want us to solve for x. One divided by b minus x is equal to a. Let's multiply both sides by what's in the denominator to get rid of that fraction. They get one is equal to a times b minus x. Trying to get x by itself, so rather than multiply this through, divide both sides by the a. Now let's add x to both sides. And then subtract 1 over a from both sides. If x is equal to b minus 1 over a. That is the final answer for problem number 7. Okay, number 8. 
So solve for x. And they give a over b x to the 1 fourth. Remember that means the fourth root of x is equal to 1. Now let's multiply both sides by x to the 1 fourth. Switch sides. Okay, x to the 1 fourth, that's the fourth root of x. This thing on the left represents that quantity, which if you multiply it by itself four times gives you x. If you raise it to the fourth power, you'll get x. It's the fourth root of x. So let's go ahead and raise that to the fourth power and get x, since that's what we're solving for. So I raise bo I got to raise both sides to the fourth power. So x is equal to a over b all to the fourth. You guys know that uh, ex exponents add, like x to the one-fourth times x to the one-half is going to be equal to x to the three-fourths. It's equal to x to the one-half plus one-fourth, or x to the three-fourths. Here, uh, when you raise something to a power and then raise that entire entity to yet another power, we find ex these exponents multiply. Uh, the one x to the one fourth to the fourth, four times one fourth gives you one. If you think of this, uh, to the fourth means x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth. That gives you, uh, by the exponents add rule, x to the one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, or x to the one, which is just x. And hence this rule, that exponents in this situation multiply, that is, a power of something raised yet again to a power, and they multiply there, that's really just an extrapolation of the rule that uh, exponents add when you're multiplying something raised to one power times that same thing raised to a different power, or to the same power, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, it, since four times one-fourth just means one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. Okay, here again, to get rid of the fourth root of something, you raise that uh, fourth root of the something to the fourth power. Our answer, a over b all to the fourth. Number nine, so solve for x, they give us ax minus 2b is equal to 5x plus 3. We want to get the x all by itself on the left hand side of the equation. Let's subtract. Let's get all the x's on the left, all terms involving x on the left, and all terms that don't involve x on the right. So I'll subtract 5x from both sides. We get ax minus 5x. And I'll add 2b to both sides. 3 plus 2b. Uh, factor out the x. I've got an x in every single term, so I can factor it out. That's the same as a minus 5 all times x. If you're in doubt about that kind of stuff, go ahead and multiply it out again. You get ax minus 5x. That's just what you had before you factored. So it's a, an identity. They're equivalent. 3 plus 2b on this side. Let's go ahead and solve for the old x. All divided by a minus 5. Okay, number 10. It says, combine the following equations to eliminate x and solve for t. Need a little room to do that. Let's go over here. same number of equations as we have unknowns. Typical procedure, solve the simpler equation for one of the unknowns in terms of the other. Well, wow. uh, this equation, it's already done. X is given in terms of D0T. In fact, they ask us to solve for T. In general, you take the simpler equation and solve for the variable that you're not interested in, the X in this case, and we've already got it in that form. 
so that when you stick it into the first equation, you've only got one equation and the one variable that you do care about. So let's take x, which is v0t, stick the v0t in for x from this first equation. So I got v0t minus x0 is equal to 1 half at squared. Since I've got a t squared, t is the thing I'm solving for. I've got a t squared. I should get it in the form of the quadratic equation and uh, see if I need to use the quadratic formula. If I've got all three terms, a t squared, a t, and a constant term, then I need to use the quadratic formula. Otherwise, you can generally solve for uh, the t. So let's try it. We've got 1 half a t squared. I'll subtract b 0 t from both sides and add x0 to both sides. I'm switching sides here. That's all equal to 0. And yeah, I've got all three terms. Something multiplying the t squared, t term, and a constant term. I've got to use the quadratic formula. That uh, says t is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac everything divided by 2a. So in our case, t is equal to minus b. Well, b in our case is the minus b0. So minus and minus b0 is just b0 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, or be a b0 squared. It's minus b0 squared, but minus uh, 1 squared is just 1. So uh, we get rid of the uh, minus sign, or a negative uh, value times a negative value gives you uh, the same thing as the positive value times the positive value. And then minus 4. Our a in this case is one half of this a, and our c is x zero, all divided by two a, two times one half a, and then we can't leave something like two times a half in there or four times a half. We got to go ahead and simplify. So t is b zero plus or minus the square root of b zero squared. Uh, 4 times a half is 2, so minus 2a x0, all divided by 2 times a half is just 1, so that little a, and that's our answer problem for 10. Let's see if we got room for number 11. Express theta in terms of x and r. It's a little right triangle, and they want theta, considering x and r and l. We know uh, the sine, well, the cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That involves the x and r, so I can write the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And now the inverse function of the cosine function is the arc cosine. I can take the arc cosine of both sides. That gets rid of the uh, cosine on this side. The arc cosine is the inverse function to the cosine. So if you take the cosine of theta and then the arc cosine of the cosine of theta, you just get theta back. Uh, in fact, if you do it in the reverse order, you get the argument back as well. Um, but here, I take the arc cosine of both sides. And I get theta is equal to the arc cosine of x over r. I can also write that theta is equal to the arc cosine of x over r. Either one of these is correct. Uh, it's important to have the arc cosine to the left. Uh, this is read theta is equal to the arc cosine of x over r, or theta is equal to the arc cosine of x over r. It's the arc cosine of what immediately follows the symbol cosine to the minus 1 or arc cosine. Uh, just as you would never write, um, if y is equal to the square root of x, you would never write it that way. You should never write um, theta is equal to the arc cosine of x. This way. 
That's meaningless. It says th this says theta is equal to the a is equal to x times the arc cosine of nothing. There's nothing that follows it. Um, just as here, y is equal to x times the square root of nothing. There's nothing inside the square root. It's a meaningless statement. And this one is just as meaningless. Do not write the cosine to the minus 1, the arc cosine, after the thing that you're trying to take the arc cosine of. It's wrong. It's got to come before it's read. Theta is equal to the arc cosine of x over r. It's of what follows. OK, we got room for number 12. Down here, number 12 says simplify this expression, 10 to the 3 times 10 to the minus 5th all squared, divided by 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the 4th. OK, up here, this is something raised to a power. Well, the 10 raised to a power, and then that whole thing raised to another power. I can say the exponents multiply. So I'll have 10 times 2 times minus 5, 10 to the minus 10th from this business. Or if you uh, don't like to memorize that rule, you can say when something is squared, that means it's 10 to the minus 5th times 10 to the minus 5th. And uh, I add the exponents, multiplying a quantity raised to two different powers. A product of a quantity raised to one power times the same quantity raised to another power is that quantity raised to the sum of the powers. So 10 to the, this means 10 to the minus fifth times 10 to the minus fifth, which gives me 10 to the minus 5 plus minus 5, or 10 to the minus 10, either way you look at it. But you should actually recognize that, uh, although they're consistent with each other, you should be able to say 10 to the minus fifth all raised to the 2 is the same as 10 to the 2 times minus 5, or 10 to the minus 10. And then I'll add to that the 3, the plus 3. So I get a 10 to the minus 7. 3 minus 10 is minus 7. All divided by, add these two together, I get 4 minus 3. I'm adding the exponents when I multiply these. So that's 10 to the 1. OK, and then in dividing quantity raised to a power divided by that same quantity raised to another power, I subtract the powers. I write it's the quantity raised to the difference of the powers, minus 7, minus 1, which gives me a minus 8. It says, calculate the volume of a right circular cylinder of length 2.3 meters and face area of 0.15 meters squared. So you got right circular cylinder where the area of a face is 0.15 meters squared and the length of the thing <coughs> is 2.3 meters for any object that's got a constant cross-section, the, the volume is just the area of that cross-section, which is the area of a face times the length of the thing. So in our case, the volume is just 0.15 meters squared times 2.3 meters. They say solve for both x and y, and they give us a set, a pair of equations. 8x minus 3y is equal to 7, and 11x plus 2y is equal to 9. We've got two equations, two unknowns, the x and the y. We can solve one of the equations for one of the unknowns in terms of the other, and then substitute that back into the former, the other equation. I'll solve this one for y. First, 
first I subtracted 11x from both sides. Now I'll divide by 2. And substitute this expression for y into this equation wherever I see y. that only has one unknown, the x, and I can go ahead and solve for that. I'll multiply this out. It can be uh, minus 13.5 plus 16.5x equals 7. Combining these two terms, we get a 24.5x. And I'll add 13.5 to both sides. That gives me 20.5 on the right-hand side. Dividing both sides by 24.5. You get 0.8367. Keep it to three sig figs, we'll call it 0.837. Rounds up. And then you gotta stick that value of x in, my known x, into my expression for y. 4.5 minus 5.5 times the 0.837. is equal to 4.5 minus 5.5 times 0.837 equals, I get a minus 0.104. Let's make a check here. It's nice to make a check with those two values. Uh, 8 times 0.837 minus 3 times a minus 0.104, does it really come out to 7? I get 8 times 0.837. <coughs> Again, I'm going to have a minus, a minus, so I'll just make it plus 3 times 0.104 equals, I get 7.008. So that one works out. Try this one as well. 11 times 0.837 plus 2 times 0 0.104 with a minus sign equals, I get 8.999, rounds off to 9, so it works for that one as well. <coughs> that was number 14. Let's try number 15. They give us an equation and they say solve for t. The equation reads t squared plus 2.8 plus 2.8 is equal to 12t. Okay. Asked to solve for t. I've got a t squared. Let's get that into the form of the quadratic equation. t squared minus 12t plus 2.8 equals 0, always equals 0. And yeah, I've got all three terms, a t squared term, a t term, and a constant term, so I've got to use the quadratic formula. Um, I've got t is minus b, minus and minus 12 is 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 144, well, let's call it 12 squared, minus 4ac. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2.8, all divided by 2a, which is just 2 times 1. I'll go ahead and plug in the values. I've got 12 squared 
which is 144 minus 4 times 2.8 equals 132.8. Let's take the square root of that and store it. Okay, now start over. 12 plus memory recall equals divided by 2 equals, I get 11.76, rounds off to 11.8 for the plus solution, and 12 minus memory recall, that square root, equals, divided by 2 equals, I get a 0.238, I call that a 0.24. for the solution corresponding to the negative square root. Number 16 says solve for x. They give us the equation 4 times x minus 3 is equal to 2 times 7 minus 2x. Let's multiply both sides out. Well, first off, I got a common factor here. I'll divide both sides by 2. That makes this a 2. So I'll go ahead and multiply this side out. 2x minus 6 is equal to 7 minus 2x. Get all the x's together on one side, all the stuff that doesn't involve x on the other. So I'll add 2x to both sides. Get 4x on this side. Add 6 to both sides. I get a 13 on that side. So x is equal to 13 fourths, or x is equal to 3.25. 17 says solve for x and t. They give us a system of two equations. x is equal to x0 plus v0x times t, and 0 is equal to v0y plus a times t. You got two equations and two unknowns. x and t are unknown. This one uh, doesn't involve an x, so we can solve directly for t and be done with it. Well, let's uh, subtract v0y from both sides and switch sides. So at is equal to minus v0y. t then is equal to minus v0y all divided by a. And that's one of our answers. I substitute that into the other expression where the t occurs to eliminate t so I can solve for x. And I get x is equal to x0 plus v0x times this quantity. Or I can write that as x is equal to x0 minus v0x, v0y, all divided by a. And there's my other solution. Okay, now they want us to solve for O. Problem number 18. Specify that it's the letter O, not the symbol 0. And they write 1 over F is equal to 1 over O plus 1 over I. I want to get 1 over O all by itself and then take the reciprocal. Let's go 1 over F. I'll subtract 1 over I from both sides. Switch sides. And then take the reciprocal of both sides. And that's as simple as it gets. I got 
it's the reciprocal of this whole thing. It's not the uh, difference between the individual reciprocals of the reciprocals. So I can't write that as f minus i. I'm stuck right there. It doesn't simplify any further. Number 19. We want us to solve for r. And we're given the expression y is equal to 2a all over b squared plus r squared. I write it like this. get rid of the fractions, usually the first step. So we'll multiply both sides by b squared plus r squared. Trying to get r all by itself. I don't want to multiply through here again. That'll give me a y times r squared. That's, uh, I don't know, more complicated than the way it is. It's already pretty much by itself, the r squared is anyway. I'll divide both sides by y to try to isolate this r squared to do all by itself. Now, subtract b squared from both sides, since it's added onto this side. And finally, take the square root of both sides. Sure, I get uh, two answers. This, uh, in this form, that's a candidate for the quadratic formula. We've got uh, r to the second power. We've got a constant term, but because uh, we have no r term, nothing multiplying, just r by itself, we don't actually have to resort to the quadratic formula. It's a special case of a quadratic equation where there's no linear term, no times r term. So we can solve it without resorting to the quadratic formula, <coughs> as we did. Number 20. AX. It's number 20. AX plus BX equals X plus C. They ask us to solve for X. Let's get all the x's together on one side and all the stuff not involving x together on the other side. I get, I'll subtract x from both sides. All these terms already have x, so I'll just keep them. Subtract x from both sides. Now, every single term on the left has an x in it. We can factor out the x. a plus b minus 1 all times x is equal to c. Let's check that step. If I multiply that through, it gives ax plus bx minus x. That's just what I had, so it's OK. Solve for x by dividing both sides by what's multiplying to x. And we're all done. Let's try problem number 21. It says r squared is 1 over x plus a. plus 3. Solve it for x. I'm going to get x all by itself. Now if I multiply through by x plus a, I can do that, but I've got to remember to multiply that term as well as that term besides that term. Let's get rid of the 3 first. I can write r squared minus 3, subtract 3 from both sides, is equal to 1 over x plus a. Now, Get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator. I have x plus a times r squared minus 3 is equal to 1. OK, I want to get x all by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. Let's divide both sides by r squared minus 3. Now I just have to subtract the a from both sides. And I'm done. 
22 reads f is equal to c over r squared. Then f prime is the same as f, but r goes to an r prime, which they say is equal to 2r. So f prime is equal to c over 2r, all squared. They said replace the r with a 2r. Since the r is getting squared up here, the 2r has to be squared here. And then express f prime as some number times f. f prime I can write as, this is c over, these are multiplying each other, so I can uh, the square of a product is equal to the product of the squares. Use that little algebra identity to say this is uh, a 4r squared in the denominator. And this piece, the c over r squared, I recognize as just f. If you wish, uh, you could uh, solve this expression for c in terms of f. It's equal to r squared f and stick it in here, and you get the same exact result, uh, rather than having to recognize the piece of it is, is just the f that we had to start with. Uh, the first way I suggest is f prime is going to be equal to 1 fourth of f. Now, they, uh, the second way they said solve for f prime in terms of f, essentially. So f prime has a c in it. Here's, here's my expression for f prime, or 1 fourth c over r squared. I'll solve this equation. This is the second way of solving it, so we've already got the answer. This equation says that c is equal to r squared f. Stick that into my expression for f prime. It says f prime is equal to r squared f divided by 4r squared. The r squareds cancel out, and again, I get f prime is equal to 1 fourth of f. You can do it either way. They want to solve for f prime in terms of f. Go ahead and eliminate the c, and uh, we get our result. If you would, uh, another way would have been to eliminate the r. It turns out that the c and the r uh, in our, our second case, we could conceivably have an R in the answer, but that, that cancels out. Uh, two ways is enough ways. I need to look at it for now. Number 23. It's four equations. First couple of equations just define what we mean by v0x and v0y in terms of the given quantities v0 and theta. And these last two, there are two equations and two unknowns. t and x, t appears by itself here. We can solve that one directly for t. t is equal to, well, 2gt, I'll add that to both sides, that's equal to v0y. Now divide both sides by 2g. And I'm almost done, but uh, I've got a v0y in there, which I replace using this equation. So t, v0 times the sine of theta, all over 2g, and I solve for t and half the problem. Uh, if I, t is, I've now got a known expression for t. If I so, substitute that into the t here, 
and my expression for x, I'll be all done. So x is equal to v0x times my expression for t. Uh, let's go ahead and substitute both quantities. We've got expressions for both unknown quantities here. v0x is v0 times the cosine of theta. And then t, v0 sine theta, divided by 2g. And of course, anything multiplying a fraction is that same thing multiplying the numerator, all divided by the denominator. So I have v0 times v0 is v0 squared, a sine of theta times a cosine of theta, all divided by 2g. And uh, I've got a g in there, a v0, a theta, and that's it. So I've got the answer. Number 24. given find L and they give us a picture here. L1 looks like a vector problem. L1 plus L2 is equal to L. We look at this as a vector problem and theta2 right there given I can look at this as a vector problem I could uh, break L1 and L2 up into components and then put them all together to form L uh, let's do it that way um, L1x we'll draw a separate diagram for L1 since I recognize that this is just the sum of two vectors is equal to a third vector there's L1 by inspection, L1x is just equal to L1. L1y is equal to 0. L2 L2x component, L2x divided by L2 is equal to the cosine of theta2. So L2x is equal to L2 times the cosine of theta2. L2y is the opposite of this angle of theta2, so L2y over L2 is equal to the sine of theta2. is the sum of L1 plus L2, Lx. It's going to be equal to L1x plus L2x. Go write that over here. Erase the board. I'm going to write 
Lx is equal to L1x plus L2x. And I've got an expression for L1x, it's equal to L. And an expression for L2x, written as L2 cosine of theta 2. So Lx is equal to L1x, uh, just L1, plus L2x, L2 times cosine of theta 2. Ly is equal to L1y plus L2y. Ly, L1y we set down here was just zero. L2y I've written as L2 times the sine of theta two. That's so just equal to L2 times the sine of theta two. I've got the components of the vector L. Draw a little diagram for that. Don't forget this last step in getting the vector itself. L is up here. That's L1x plus, uh, that's L sub x and L sub y. Any vector is just the sum of its components. So L in magnitude, that's what they wanted, is the square root of Lx squared plus Ly squared. And we've got expressions for both Lx and Ly. That's L1 plus L2 times the cosine of theta 2, all squared, plus, and Ly is L2 times the sine of theta 2. All squared. Now I'm making this video for a class which has already studied vectors as part of the course. If you were to do this before you did any study of vectors,